The story today, cold weather, 6 degrees at Bozeman, Montana, and 4 degrees at Dillon. At Minot, 21 degrees, with a west wind gusting to 35 knots. What's going on? Let's take a look. There's a look at the surface map on this Friday afternoon. The reinforcing shot of cold air has moved into Texas and the southeastern U.S. The freezing line all the way down towards Plainview, Texas, Oklahoma City, and closing in on St. Louis. And extensive snow showers up in the Great Lakes region, strong westerly winds, and warm lake temperatures helping to generate that lake effect snow. The Bear Clinic Low associated with this outbreak has moved into Virginia, a meager warm sector through the Carolinas, and just some transitional air down to the south already responding to that anti-cyclone building in across the central plains. So winds have turned around to the north, but this is not post-frontal air. In New Mexico, they're getting some easterly flow, upslope conditions, marginal VFR, and snow and fog. Some inclement weather there along Interstate 40, and some canyon winds blowing into Albuquerque this afternoon. The warm sector associated with the tail end in the Four Corners area, a warm 44 degrees at Cortez, Colorado, and in Utah and Nevada, 30s with northerly flow through that region. Heading up north, uh, we got a, another outbreak on its way south, just an endless train of them, but the air behind it is not very cold, mid-20s. Of course, that could be a lot worse. In January, we would be seeing below zero with some of these outbreaks. And at Churchill, gusting the 40 knots, so they're getting blizzard-like conditions along the western Hudson Bay region. The Arctic High is starting to break up. That's the remnants of it. If you've tuned into the program, you probably recall the very cold temperatures in the interior. That's starting to fizzle and go away. Temperatures coming up to the teens around Fairbanks. And we're just holding on to minus 13 around Mayo, Yukon. We've had a pretty strong surge of warm air work across Alaska. That's helped to disperse the Arctic air. And in response to that, we're seeing temperatures in the 20s. Very warm there in the Northwest Territories. But you go a little bit further to the east, very cold weather. These are probably the coldest readings I've seen so far this season. Minus 20 to minus 22 at Rhea Point and Resolute. And that's one little chunk of that polar air. The rest of that polar air is further south. There's some of it right there along the coast of Hudson Bay. And we come around down to the south and we're back to the U.S. So let's take a look at a few more charts. Here is one area we have some weather going on. Some clouds are definitely on the move. Other clouds are just sitting there. This is going to be cirrus with some bands of alto cumulus. There's some mountain wave activity right there. And the clouds that are not moving, that's going to be stratus and fog, part of that upslope flow regime working into eastern New Mexico. And that's banked up against the Sacramento Mountains and the Sangre de Cristos. You can see white sands right there. White sands, of course, does not move at all when we animate that. But you can see the edges of the stratus oozing to the west and a little bit to the south. Here's how all of that looks on the AWIPS plot. You can see the cold temperatures there in the higher terrain, easterly flow, some fog, temperatures around 24 to actually 20 to 25. That's quite cold, and 23 up here in the foothills of the Sacramento Mountains. And those are located here. You can see on the other side near White Sands, Alamogordo, they've got a south wind with 50 degrees and 52 south of Albuquerque. If you go further north, you can see the cold air infiltrating the Rio Grande Valley. And most of that has happened up in this area here and to a certain extent at El Paso. But you can see the temperature at El Paso is fairly warm, 58 degrees, even though they have an east wind. So if we add the potential temperature, 
that's going to be the temperature reduced to a common level. And we find a definite front right through here, right against the Sacramento Mountains. It becomes a little more diffuse as you go south and as you go to the northwest. So they've had quite a bit of heating right here in this area. And as we work up to the north, we start getting into what could be post-frontal air. And there's your isobars. That can also be of some help. You can see how the gradient differs in northern Arizona compared to eastern New Mexico. So the frontal boundary is going to be somewhere in here. So we could go back and refine the frontal position. So one possibility is it could be a little bit further south compared to what we have up here in Utah. And that kind of thing that would require a little bit more analysis. And chances are this could be the actual front down there around Interstate 40. We can see down in Mexico, they're also getting some upslope flow. Stratus all the way down towards Monterey and extending up towards San Angelo. East winds, temperatures in the 50s, and on the other side, warm, sunny weather. And if we go a little bit further south into the Bay of Campeche, some organized storm activity, the frontal boundary all the way down in that area, and a little MCS out there in the Gulf of Mexico. With those strong westerlies blowing across the Appalachians, we've got mountain wave activity spreading into Virginia, so probably a bumpy ride for people flying out of D.C. airport. Southerly flow, but the next system lined up right there across the Appalachians, and back behind it, cold air advection, cumulus. We get back behind that frontal boundary, long fetch of westerly winds, temperatures mostly in the 20s, and snow showers, especially north of, uh, what is that, Interstate, Interstate 70? And further up north, very stormy and turbulent in the Great Lakes region. Full blast lake effect snows. You can see the flow moving over Lake Michigan, picking up moisture and warmth and dumping it there on western Michigan. Temperatures in the 20s and 30s also. And a little eddy, some sort of small-scale disturbance out there in Lake Huron, about to move into Ontario. And the snow is coming down at, uh, what is that, Wyerton? Weirton, I can't remember how that's pronounced. Let's uh, go a little bit further west. Also, lots of lake effect snows to be had around Lake Superior. Unstable conditions in Wisconsin and Minnesota with that strong air mass modification taking place. And the next dynamic system to the west. And that's it. You probably notice it's getting harder and harder to see what's going on. Let me take the uh, surface plots off. And what do we see here? Well, this is going to be the mid and upper level stuff. Low level clouds through here, but it's still a little bit hard to see what's going on. But yeah, that, that is going to be a low cloud field. If we switch over to infrared, it's a little bit easier to see. That's going to be that shortwave disturbance dropping out of Canada. And there's how it looks on the water vapor imagery. That's the axis right there. And that tail end there, pretty stout. It's probably some good energy heading into Montana and the Dakotas. And let us survey some of these very cold temperatures at this hour. This is the mid-afternoon temperatures. You can see we're below freezing at Oklahoma City, and especially up in Kansas City and in Missouri. These are setting records for the coldest afternoon high on record for the date. Kansas City, 28 degrees. That's probably about as high as they're going to get, and the record for the date is 29, so that's quite a cold day there. Joplin expecting a high of 32 there at 30, and the record for the date is 36. And we're expecting a similar situation tomorrow in Minnesota, with highs in the upper teens and 20s. And we can take a look at the upper air charts. This is the latest 18Z GFS showing the 500 millibar heights and vorticity, open northerly flow coming out of Canada, and a trough. That's a pretty strong one moving through 
California and Nevada. Let's see where that's headed. It starts shearing off, almost a cutoff low in southern Arizona by Sunday morning. And then heading into Monday, that heads into Texas. And it has not quite closed off. It's going to be an open wave, so it will progress pretty quickly. A couple more troughs moving through Ontario. And here's another one. Those are features you're going to want to keep an eye on. And looking at the vorticity field, there's another one. So let's see how that all works out. Everything is moving very quickly. None of those troughs really take root. But this one coming out of the Pacific, that's pretty active. By Wednesday, that'll be diving into Wyoming and the Dakotas and moving right down into the plains. And eventually it carves out a cutoff low in the Midwest region late next week. So some inclement weather coming up for that part of the country in about a week from now. And look at that out west, 585 millibar high pressure. And that could be associated with some very warm conditions. Yeah, there it is. There's the 850 millibar temperature anomaly. Temperatures around 20 degrees Fahrenheit above normal at 850 millibars west of the Cascades and the Sierra Nevadas. It could be a bit of a heat wave through that part of the country. Meanwhile, more cold air moving through the plains. Let's back that up and see how that all comes together. That's where we're at right now. So this is going to slowly moderate as we get into the weekend and the first part of next week. See, there's some warm air coming down. You would never think warm air would be coming out of Canada, but that is the case Sunday and Monday. Some plateau-type high activity right down there in West Texas and in Old Mexico, as well as in Idaho. So those are the holdouts for cold air. Cold air tends to get trapped in the valleys, and that's what we're seeing there, but that'll go away. And going into Wednesday and Thursday, warm across much of the country, but cold air developing very quickly by Thursday, and we end up with another cold blast in about a week. So let's take a look at the temperature extremes. For tomorrow, starting out with 17 degrees at Paducah, it will be pretty blustery through much of Minnesota tomorrow, and lake effect snows going big time up there in the Great Lakes. The Snake River Valley under that plateau high and getting some more cold weather overnight. For Sunday, the polar air mass shifts into the Midwest and the Appalachians. Starting out the morning in the teens in Ohio and Indiana, and the plateau high continues to hold tight across Idaho. Monday is where we start to see some moderation take place. The cold air still is making its way across the Appalachians, but starting out at only 17 to 21 through this area here. Probably a little bit colder up north, but that would be closer to the normals. And 3 degrees at Pocatello. On Tuesday, we finally return to seasonal normals. Same thing on Wednesday. And a similar picture on Thursday. But with that upper level ridge out in this area, we could start seeing a few high temperatures pop up out there. Although we just looked at a single model. That was the deterministic GFS. The European model, I have not looked at that. The GDPS haven't looked at that either, but that could be showing a different picture. Not really sure, but there is a lot of uncertainty in these very blocky weather patterns. Well, you know, why don't we take a look? This is the forecast for Friday morning next week. You can see it's very troughy in the Midwest and the Arkansas, Oklahoma area, and a big ridge out west. So once again, we find ourselves in this big meridional pattern. So we can compare the models, and the way we do that, up at the very top on Pivotal Weather, we go to this Compare Models loop. And that way we can compare all the different models. So that's the GFS. Let's take a look at the ECMWF. And it's got the same situation going on. This weird little cutoff low south of Yuma 
that'll be something to keep an eye on. But it's going also for that very deep troughing in the Midwest down towards the Mississippi River Valley, maybe a little bit faster than the GFS. GDPS, maybe not quite as high amplitude as the other models, but same story. Lots of ridging out west, not the cutoff high, and no sign of that little cutoff flow down there south of Yuma. Looks like the GFS had that, so it'll be interesting to see how this resolves. And just for the heck of it, the climate forecast system. Yeah, it's gone a little bit further east with everything and not quite as high amplitude. And that'll do it for this edition of Forecast Lab. Thank you for joining. Hope you have a great weekend. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.